Have you ever wondered what prisons were like in the medieval ages? The discomfort we experience in our lives may seem insignificant compared to life in a medieval prison. Greetings everyone today, we will unearth the grim realities of medieval prisons, where the incarcerated lived in squalor, often unaware of their alleged crimes and, consequently, their destinies. We will traverse through the dungeons beneath the castles, the high towers, and notorious prisons such as Fleet Prison and Oubliette, revealing the inhumane conditions, the corruption, and the sheer brutality that define these places. If you find this video interesting, please support us by hitting the like button. Now, let's get started. Overwhelming odor and excessive free time. First of all, there were no police in the Middle Ages. But of course, there was crime in the Middle Ages as well. From petty crimes like stealing bread due to life's hardships, to more serious ones like murder, there were unique crimes of that era, such as rebellion, heresy, and treason. So how was it policed without the police? Identifying criminals was the responsibility of the community. If a community member identified a criminal, they would shout loudly to alert the rest of the villagers. Then all the villagers who heard it would come and work to capture the criminal. If anyone failed to participate, the entire community would face fines. This collective responsibility fostered a sense of solidarity. Among community members, there was also a system in which the men of the village were divided into groups of ten and made to watch each other. If someone were apprehended under such circumstances, they would find themselves incarcerated. Once imprisoned in medieval England, inmates were responsible for their own lodging and meals. Due to the lack of lighting, they also had to provide or pay for necessities like lamps. Poor prisoners without money relied on donations or begged for money from prison windows. Also, when entering the prison, prisoners were divided into two groups. The master's side and the common side in layman's terms. The rich and the general public. The master side accommodated affluent prisoners who could afford to pay a premium for better rooms and quality food. The common side, designated for the general public, was a dirty, musty, and unhygienic space where multiple prisoners were confined together. If unlucky, one could be assigned a room in the basement. And prison life could have been quite painful, depending on the location and direction of the room you were housed in. Fleet Prison, constructed in the 12th century, had a lengthy existence spanning 700 years. There was a reason for this. There was a butcher shop nearby that was discharging industrial waste. Blood and pieces of meat into this canal. The accumulated garbage waste in the canal obstructed the flow of water. Residents living nearby also used it as a convenient dumping ground. Using it for toilets and dumping garbage. The conditions were horrendous. As one can imagine, the contents of this waterway would ferment on hot days, intensifying the foul odor. This smell filled the jail. So, what was on the menu for the prisoners? Unfortunately, concrete evidence detailing the food provided to prisoners during the Middle Ages is scarce. However, excavations have revealed some things. There were traces of cherries, grapes, plums, and fig trees. There were also traces of cabbage and cauliflower plants that were cultivated. And there were also traces of meat and fish. And it is believed that there might have been partnerships with restaurants. Also, in medieval society, it was encouraged to show benevolence to the less fortunate, so the wealthy would sometimes serve bread and beer to the poor prisoners. Furthermore, some wealthy individuals, upon their demise, would leave instructions in their wills for part of their wealth to benefit the prisoners. However, it raises questions about whether the donations were properly distributed to the prisoners. That's right, there were often problems with prison officials improperly pocketing and misusing the money. Also, the guards were quite vicious. And if there was a possibility of a prisoner escaping, the guards were allowed to put shackles or chains around the prisoner. This practice was extensively abused, with prisoners often being restrained with chains and other devices, seemingly to alleviate the guards' stress. This is one of the reasons why running a prison was so profitable. In medieval England, there was a notorious prison called Newgate Jail, and someone paid a huge sum of money to become the governor of this prison. This was a great opportunity to make investment money. Now, in modern prisons, prisoners receive programs for work and fairness and so on. But in the Middle Ages, there was none of that. So, in addition to the harsh conditions, prisoners had to contend with boredom. They had an abundance of free time. There is a record of a guard who was fined in 1369 for letting an unauthorized woman into the prison. In the midst of this rough life, their most relaxing moments were when they gambled. Gambling in prison was the best form of entertainment, as it allowed people to gather quickly enjoy easy distraction, and forget reality by immersing themselves in the game. By the way, during the Middle Ages, 
Kings and their many cronies moved from one fiefdom to another. They led a lavish lifestyle, residing in the countryside for extended periods and hosting grand feasts nightly. They would leave behind castles strewn with refuse and fecal matter, before moving on to the next locale. Because of this style, you would need a large amount of food every time. A large group of people arrived. However, accommodating the sudden arrival of hundreds of people requesting cooked rice could be overwhelmingly challenging. How on earth did they do it? In York, England, there was a building called Davy Hall. Here the king built a pantry. They stockpiled liquor, bread, etc. A man named David who lived here became the keeper of the pantry, and his family maintained this role for 300 years through hereditary succession. There were terrible and unreasonable rules. The food for the pantry had to be provided free of charge. And every week David would rob the liquor stores of their best liquor, meat, and fresh fish at the market. By the way, the larder Davy Hall, where David's family lived, had a jail in addition to the larder. The forest around here belonged to the king, and the animals living there were considered his property. His source of meat and food. If you were hungry and caught an animal in the forest, you would be caught for stealing the king's property and held in David's prison. David's prison was not associated with death, but was a possession of the royal family. So the citizens could not take any action regarding those who were captured. But here's the interesting thing. There is no record of the jail being used frequently. David was fixated on foolproof schemes to extract money and goods from the townspeople. Court records are still available. He appears to have been a very greedy jailer, yet showed humanity in some ways. The worst prison oubliette. When you hear the term, medieval castle prison, what do you imagine? Early castle prisons were located on top of high towers. The reason for this was that it was considered the easiest place to catch prisoners when they tried to escape. In this period, it was common for aristocrats to kidnap children of noble families, lock them up, and hold them hostage. The high tower may have been the perfect place for such a situation. Gradually, however, the corridors and dungeons of these castles began to be placed in unpleasant places. They became cold and damp, places where no one wanted to live. And yes, they were built underground. But even worse than these underground prisons, however, was a prison called Oubliette. This prison confined prisoners in a vertically dug hole, a dark and narrow space. From the prisoner's point of view, the only way out was up. The cramped space restricted movement and rendered escape impossible. Moreover, there were the corpses of people who had been put there before at their feet. Rats roamed about, making it a mentally demanding experience. Enduring confinement under such conditions equated to psychological torture, frequently utilized to extract confessions. Medieval prisons were notorious for their poor conditions, inequality, and rampant bribery. In the late 1700s, a senior English official named John Howard was appalled by the appalling living conditions and corrupt guards in the prisons. John Howard then traveled to various prisons, visited cells and torture chambers, talked with guards and prisoners, and conducted extensive interviews. He discovered that numerous guards would not release prisoners unless they received payment. Even if the prisoners had been proven innocent, leading to the prolonged incarceration of many innocent and impoverished individuals. As a result, poor innocent people often remained in prison for no good reason. John Howard decided to publish a book about this and bring the issue to the forefront of societal discussion. It exposed the appalling conditions in prisons and ushered in reform of the prison system. Over the next 100 years, various laws and new movements were enacted to improve the medieval prison system. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more insightful content. Take care and see you in the next video. Goodbye.